Well, welcome to episode 47 of 10 Minute Record Reviews. And this time I'm going to talk about ACDC's 1978 album, Power Age, which is kind of a, well, I don't know what you want to call it, a diamond in the rough, an unsung classic, a uh, sleeper of an album. It's all, it's all those things, I guess. This is the 1978 UK first pressing, which is kind of significant because this is one of the very few pressings of the early releases of this album, along with some other releases in Europe which actually has a different uh, track lineup than the album that most people have come to know as Power Age. Uh, and the biggest single piece of that is that uh, one of, well, one of my absolute favorite ACDC songs of all time, Rock and Roll Damnation, does not kick off the album. And a different song, Cold Hearted Man, occurs in side two. The other major difference between this and subsequent releases that would be that the mix on this is significantly grittier and more rock and roll and less polished than on than on subsequent versions. So in 1978 when this album was released, ACDC had been chugging away for a few years, four or five years. They'd had some degree of success, but they were still not widely being accepted. They'd had their album Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap rejected in its original form by their label, and they'd also recently been kicked off a Sabbath tour of Europe. Uh, the stories behind this, well, depends who you believe. One reason was that their equipment kept malfunctioning and that kept causing delays in the shows and eventually Sabbath got sick of it. Another story, a little spicier, is that Geezer Butler, I guess, had picked up some kind of a switchblade knife and Malcolm Young and he were in the bar and Malcolm Young was giving him a hard time about, about Sabbath and, and, and their lack of hunger and Geezer pulls out the knife. Whether he was challenged to pull out the knife by Malcolm Young or whether he pulled out the knife to intimidate Malcolm Young or what was going on because, uh, you know, everybody was a little bit drunk. Anyway, what everyone agrees on is that Ozzy eventually comes into the bar and calms everybody down. But whatever, whatever the truth of that, however it happened, they're fired from the tour. They're not getting the sales they wanted. They, you know, they're, they're, they're not getting the support from the record company that they wanted. And this album also marks a change of lineup because Mark Evans is out on bass and Cliff Williams is in. This is probably an appropriate moment to talk about the three sort of sonic periods of ACDC. The first is sort of 74 to 78 thereabouts, which, is, which are the early years of the band with Harry Vanda and George Young, who of course is the Young Brothers' elder brother, doing the production. A much rawer sound in production, sounds very much like a band playing live in the studio. Lots of little sort of snippets of, of, of loose edges left on the albums, which again, give you that raw sound, very sort of classic ACDC sound that, that is arguably like the truest manifestation of the whole band. Then Mutt Lang comes in, polishes up their sound completely, and, and that's the period where they release not just Highway to Hell, but of course Back in Black and For Those About to Rock. And then the, you know, the kind of the subsequent phase where the production is handled by a variety of different people, the quality uh, waxes and wanes, and Brian Johnson uh, begins to sound like he's pinching out a loaf with every uh, with every passing album. So this is very much, though, part of that you know the heart of that that first raw period, and and the guitar tone, and the overall sound is 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 absolutely unmistakably early AC/DC. So the U.S. version starts with Rock and Roll Damnation, which is. Well, certainly at times has been my favorite ACDC song. There's absolutely everything to like about it. You know, themes of damnation, balls out rock and roll, Bon Scott lyrically at his best, the band is completely tight, and it's, it's an absolutely anthemic, uh, before they were even conceived of as an, as an arena rock band, this is an absolutely anthemic tune. And, and one which, which I find myself just randomly humming at various points like all the way through my life. Fantastic song. That said, not on this cut of the album. This is led off by Give Me a Bullet. I think it's a pretty good song. I think the, the riff is nothing special. The solo is nothing special. I don't know that the, you know, lyrically it's anything particularly special. Not the most inspiring opening to the album. Followed by Down Payment Blues, which is Lyrically interesting, you would not say that ACDC is a band that is big on socially conscious songs, but this is one of those tunes which has a lot to say about existence of, of being a working class person. It's a blues, and I don't know that these guys did blues as well as they did, you know, boogie rock and, 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 and heavier rock songs in the future. But all those petty complaints aside, you get to the third song, Gone Shootin', and I think this is 
an absolute monster of a song. This is about Bon Scott's girlfriend who died of an overdose. It's one of those ACDC songs that, that typically only fans know. It's not widely known. You put the song on at a party, most people are, are gonna react like they've never heard the song before. It has an absolutely wicked riff. Actually, it's got, it's got two really good riffs in it, and like, like a lot of their better tunes, they're just, you know, at certain points, Malcolm is just overflowing with musical ideas, and he's the principal writer of the, the hooks and licks which they use. And then it's got that great sort of, I don't know, ACDC heaven kind of thing where, you know, Malcolm starts off the song, you know, on, on rhythm, Angus sort of joins in noodling, and then eventually he finds his way to the rhythm as well, to the main riff. Uh, and then they start in on it, and then they start, you know, doing it in sort of a, you know, kind of a palm muted way once they sort of settled into the groove. It is amazing how these guys, people say, oh, ACDC is so simple, right? You know, the drumming's so simple, the riffs are so simple, it's all one, four, five progressions, it's all three or four chords. Yeah, that's all true. And yet, if it's so simple, how is it that no one else manages to do this so hypnotically, so seductively as these guys? Like, just, just wonderful musical sense, creating amazing things out of very simple components. And this is exactly what happens on on, uh, on this song. Then the side concludes with Riff Raff, which is kind of an unusual song in that they have this, this, this sort of rapidly strummed fanfare uh, with, a, with a kind of a drum crescendo building through it, which is, uh, which again, you don't, you know, not usually they just jump right into their you know they've got us an initial salvo and they jump right into the riff and that's not the case here it's not clear what the song's about i don't think it matters the song just moves at a breakneck pace you know it's got a solo to match it's a pretty darn good song and that's the end of side one side two we're on to another highlight or like a real highlight which is sin city and this is the masterpiece in terms of bon scott's lyrics like all his great moments it's really rock and roll it's funny it celebrates the seedier sides of life and and it has enormous impact and 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 the delivery is fantastic it's also got once again that great sort of dual rhythm attack from angus and malcolm with the, with the palm muted guitars and, and you know there's so much tension all the way through this it's a great riff it's a simple riff i mean anybody can play it anybody can play this you know given 25 minutes but it's so infectious i think the greatest part about this song is the mid-song breakdown where you know where the where the band just brings it right down, and, you know, and you're just listening to Cliff Williams' bass, and and you know Bond is is you know practically whispering the lyrics, and then suddenly you know it explodes again, and he's singing you know Fingers Freddy, Diamond Jim, maybe Bond Scott's greatest moment in ACDC is the bridge in the song, so that's a pretty amazing way to start that side. Up to my neck and you which I think is a, you know, it's a passable ACDC tune. You know, Bond singing about, you know, how he's had a hard life, you now he's got a good woman, you got, you got a kind of a honky-tonk solo from Angus. Followed by What's Next to the Moon, which again, I don't think is anything particularly remarkable overall, but it does have, I think, a, this great, you know, the, the, it's your love that I want, it's your love that I need part in the chorus, which I think is, is a, another great ACDC moment. A very kind of Beatles-y middle eight too, so it's an interesting little piece of songwriting. And then we're on to Cold Hearted Man, which as I mentioned before at the top of this review, is a song which gave way to bring in Rock and Roll Damnation, which the record company had wanted as a more radio-friendly, hit-worthy song. So this song was sacrificed, which is a strange choice because I think there are actually weaker songs that stay on the album. This is a, a, a slower, moodier, and a kind of atypical ACDC song, possibly why it was sacrificed, but, but I think actually keeping it on, it adds to the variety of this particular release. It's a, it's a fictional story about a, about a broken person. It's, it's really quite intriguing. And if you've not ever heard this, I totally recommend, you know, jumping on Spotify or whatever and making the effort to listen to it. It's, it's quite something. And then Kicked in the Teeth closes out the album. This is one of those songs where you can tell that this is a different release because there are a number of, of actual pieces that are recorded here which are distinct from subsequent releases. So for instance, there's an opening chord before, like on the on the U.S. release and the Canadian release, uh, it starts off with Bond saying, Two-Face, woman with your two-face lies. Here, there's a power chord which occurs before the opening of the song. It's also quite clear that the vocal track is a different vocal track than he laid down for the subsequent release. And, and you know, so you've got different guitar track, or, or at least a different guitar edit, and you've got a different vocal track as well. As for the song itself, it's not the best song they ever did. It's not the worst song they ever did. It's just okay. So overall, it's kind of 
challenging to come up with a single assessment for this album because first of all you have to say okay am i talking about the uk release which sounds a lot better in terms of the mix but doesn't necessarily have the best uh, track listing because the north american release has rock and roll damnation which is one of their greatest ever songs depending on the release you're listening to this has either two of or three of the greatest songs they ever released but the other songs are there's not a bad song here on either on either version but the there aren't that many great moments in some of the other songs i have to say so i'd give it a four out of five great quality at times amazing but inconsistent